This is Dr. John Odette. Uh, today we'll be presenting a case of a pseudo-Argentinian flag sign. Uh, this is a dense, mature cataract. As you can see, it's uh, whitish-brown with water clefts in the center, clearly under um, high pressure, as you will see throughout the case. There were multiple things that could have and should have been done differently in this case to prevent um, some of the intraoperative uh, occurrences. At this point we're injecting Vision Blue to stain the capsule. Uh, the Vision Blue was uh, rinsed with saline uh, with BSS out of the eye and now we're injecting uh, Helon Endicoat. At this point I would have uh, been better served by using something a little more dense like Helon 5. Uh, however, um, as I said, this was a case where multiple things could have been done differently. We enter the eye and uh, start the capsulorexis with our cystotome. Um, the beginning uh, of the capsulorexis does not immediately um, spin out as you would expect in most Argentinian flag signs. Uh, the utrata was then used to try to complete the capsulorexis. You can see some viscoelastic coming out of the primary incision um, and the uh, uh, capsulorexis starts to spin out. This was immediately recognized and more uh, viscoelastic was placed inside the eye to try and deepen the chamber and prevent uh, uh, posterior pressure from causing this uh, capsule to spin out. Here we should have um, uh, used different vector forces to try to complete the capsulorexis but you can see that uh, the capsule uh, capsulorexis uh, spun out uh, posteriorly. At this point the decision was made to try and uh, restart a capsulorexis going uh, in the clockwise direction instead of the counterclockwise direction. A cystotome was used to try to um, make an additional nick in the uh, original capsulorexis. This was unsuccessful. At this point I wanted to see uh, how far posterior this uh, rent went, but uh, the pupil was too dilated and I could not visualize it. Uh, I decided at this point to use an MST micro scissors to uh, trim a, a portion into the uh, capsulorexis. My thought going forward was I would be able to uh, then um, uh, complete the capsulorexis going in a clockwise motion but immediately upon entering the eye this capsulorexis also spun posteriorly. Had I made uh, the incision elsewhere this probably would have been avoided. Finally I decide to make a, a quality decision and make some uh, radial rents in the capsule to uh, distribute the posterior pressure more evenly. We also use the MST micro scissors to trim the uh, remaining portion of capsule that is in the uh, center portion of the lens. At this point, uh, the decision could be made to either um, perform an extra capsular uh, cataract procedure or uh, attempt to phaco emulsify this lens. Um, depending on how confident one is that these uh, rents have not uh, gone posterior, uh, the decision could be made either way. Uh, at the time of this procedure, I felt like the uh, rents did not extend posterior as the lens was still behaving normally. So I decided to uh, proceed with uh, a uh, phaco chop technique. This was the moment of truth when you enter the uh, anterior chamber with the uh, phaco emulsification handpiece and the lens does not immediately go posterior, you can be fairly confident that you have um, some posterior support. As I mentioned, a phaco chop technique was used. This was done in more of a horizontal chopping fashion. Um, the lens was spinning freely and behaving normally, so I uh, had good control of the lens throughout the uh, phaco emulsification process. Um, the uh, lens was very gingerly removed uh, using this uh, horizontal chop technique. You will see I will actually uh, start to flip the lens um, and perform a mini uh, flip, and, flip and chop technique here. 
uh, as you can see right here in the video. The lens comes forward and we are able to slowly chop it up into pieces. Um, this is a somewhat high stress scenario because you still do not know uh, what you have as it relates to posterior capsular support. So I was keeping the um, irrigation uh, and more importantly the aspiration of this lens uh, quite high on my handpiece. Uh, eventually we uh, are able to chop the lens and uh, the entire lens is removed from the eye. Um, successfully none of this went posteriorly nor did any of it uh, go around the uh, extensions in the capsular axis. This was a concern throughout the case. Um, next we decide to begin very minimal uh, irrigation and aspiration to clean up any residual cortex that is uh, currently present. This was done once again very gingerly so as not to further disturb this uh, capsule. When we are confident that the majority of the cortex has been removed, we uh, proceed with inserting a three-piece lens. The decision could have been made to use a one-piece lens in this case, but very gentle uh, insertion of the three-piece lens was used in case uh, this needed to be uh, placed into the sulcus. I felt like we still had enough capsular support so I could put it in the uh, bag. However, uh, it would have been uh, very simple if, since I already had the three-piece lens in the eye to simply uh, spin it up into the sulcus if I needed. Uh, as you can see, I'm inserting this lens very slowly, very gingerly, so as not to further disrupt this uh, already um, traumatized capsule. The lens eventually uh, seats very nicely inside the capsule. Uh, after we are confident that it is in the capsule and seated nicely, we perform uh, some gentle IAA to remove the remaining viscoelastic. This patient uh, did very well in the post-operative period. Post-operative day number one, he was seeing 20-30 vision. Um, initially, he started with uh, light perception only vision. Uh, the patient was extremely happy despite our difficulties and challenges with this case. Uh, here we are performing the irrigation aspiration of the uh, remaining viscoelastic and uh, following this we will close the eye and uh, the patient did quite well. Thank you.